G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. It's the reviewer's curse strikes again. I've spent a lot of time setting up this, this uh, Screamer 250. Now, it came, it was supposed to be ready to fly with the, uh, what is it, the 89 Radiolink transmitter. It should have just been basically put a battery on and fly it. Unfortunately, things are never that simple here at RC Model Reviews and I've just spent three hours trying to get this sorted because there were a couple of problems. First of all, these I'll show you in a couple of video or parts of the video coming up, but it had problems with the motors, or one motor in particular, which is probably a uh, manufacturing flaw, but I mean, I don't know for sure. And the other thing was with this transmitter here, which is really out of spec, I'm afraid. Now I've managed to overcome the problems. I have sorted out the motor shaft and I have just added some dead band to the yaw for the transmitter because really the, the rudder stick just does not centre, it just does not centre reliably. Physically it centres but electrically or electronically it just keeps, it just doesn't go back to the same numbers. It's wildly out which meant when I, I did have a little quick hover and it was just constantly turning left and then I'd straighten it up and it'd be alright and then I'd give a bit of lift and it would just keep turning left, just wasn't centering. So I widened up the dead band, hopefully that will fix it but again that really detracts from the experience when you've got the, you know, to have dead band there, you want nice sharp control, you put dead band in, well it's, it's nothing happens around the centre of the stick, so there you go. Um, so here's the videos coming up, uh, this is I sort of filmed what I was doing as I went along and you can probably sense my frustration. Okay, excuse the handheld camera shots here and the bad audio, but this is something I've never encountered before, I wanted to put this uh, screamer on the laptop here so I could adjust some of the settings it looks like the center points on the certainly on the yaw channel are not centered because it just keeps yawing around a constant yawing at a constant rate unless I use the trim and then it won't disarm but this nut seems to have frozen onto the shaft of the motor I was able to undo it half a turn the prop spins but um, getting it off now it's just it's the devil's own job and I didn't over torque it I mean the others are all being fine I took them just down the normal way and they come undone usually they come undone really well this one is just jammed up tight. I can get half a turn out of it, then it locks. Oh man, that's a bit bloody disappointing. So I will continue, but I have a feeling that given the amount of torque I'm having to apply here, and of course you can't get a good hold on the motor because of these motor mounts, so you can't actually grip the motor. You can only get it a bit on the side and you run the risk of bending a shaft or damaging the bearings by putting too much lateral load on the motor. What a disappointment that is. Um, yeah. Uh, if there's a dud, I'll get it. And it looks like I got this one. I'm not sure what has happened. I'm going to put some heat on the nut. Hopefully that'll expand it away. Either it's galled on the thread, but that's unlikely because it did undo um, a full half a turn. Or maybe the nylock part here, it's something wrong with that. But again, um, it doesn't look. I can see no damage to the thread and I can see no damage to the nut. So, yeah, it's got me stumped a little bit. And yes, I am turning it the right way. <laughs> it is a conventional uh, thread. Um, counterclockwise to undo but oh man always take the props off before you make any changes of course and that's what I'm doing but I'm stumped hmm okay I managed to get the nut off and this is what happened it looks as if the nut and the sh and the thread here they've galled and what happens is galled is like a form of cold welding when you have similar metals especially metals like aluminium or aluminium stainless steel and a few others when you apply a little bit of pressure in these two bare metal surfaces together, they actually cold weld together. And that means that, that, you know, basically they stick. Now what happens normally with nuts, like the nuts that we use on here, is that they are anodized and so is the shaft on the motor. So the anodizing is actually a ceramic, it's very strong, and it provides a barrier to stop the raw, the actual bare metal parts touching. So you can use an aluminum nut on an aluminum shaft or an aluminum thread. But the problem is if the anodizing isn't done properly, then it breaks down and you get the metal on metal which means then it just galls up and it'll jam and sometimes it jams I know in engineering you get a galled nut on a thread and that's it there's nothing you can do it's welded cold welded solid to get this off I used a bit of heat from my heat gun which may enable it to expand enough that I was able to unthread it if I hadn't used heat I'm pretty sure that I would have actually ended up simply stripping the thread out of that nut um, that's the problem with aluminium on aluminium I'd much rather see a steel nut because steel won't cold weld to aluminium like that and for the for what is it less than a gram probably um, there's no point in using an aluminium nut it's, it's a waste it's a it's a false economy the amount of weight it saves is not worth the hassle if for some reason there's an imperfection in the anodizing or if you just over torque it now i didn't over torque this because i knew this was aluminium and the nut was aluminium so it's very careful in talking it down as you can see by the other four the other three thrust motors 
and the, sorry, the other three lift motors and the thrust motor, you can see they came undone perfectly well. So there must have been a flaw in the anodizing either on this motor shaft that I didn't see or perhaps more likely in the nut itself. If the nut wasn't anodized properly on the thread part, then that broken down and it's pulled a bit of the anodizing so it's all just sort of got torn up there. Well, it's, I, I'm able to save this. It's not so bad. But what I'm going to have to do now is use a bit of lubricant on the thread, believe it or not. We have to lubricate the thread. Most of us think, oh, damn. You know, we have to stop the nut from coming undone. But now I'm going to have to use some anti-seize on the thread. Otherwise, if I put the nut back on there, now that we've got metal to metal contact, it would gall up and I'd never get the damn thing off. So it's one of the downsides of all this ultra, you know, everyone looking for ultra lightweight. Well, no, sometimes just reliability and robustness is a hell of a lot better than ultra lightweight. As I say, especially when you're dealing with something that's, you know, a couple of grams at the most. So there you go. A motor manufacturer. If you get these motors, aluminium motors with aluminium nuts, throw the nuts away but again again the big problem is getting hold of left-hand thread steel nuts can be a bit of an issue so I don't like this reverse thread shit it's just it's unnecessary and it's annoying so uh, fortunately this is a conventional thread so I have some steel lock nuts that I can use and these are flanged slightly flanged so I think I've got some flanged ones too not sure but hopefully I have I'll use those and I'll put a little light bit of oil on there just so that it doesn't gall up anyway so there you go, I thought you might like to know that. Some of the things you have to face when you're reviewing stuff. This was going to be a five second job just to change some settings on the CleanFlight set of CleanFlight software on this Screamer 250. It's turned into a bit of a bloody nightmare. It's taken me half an hour to get that nut off without breaking the shaft or stripping the thread. Hmm, there you go. Okay, I've uh, managed to get that off as I said and now I'm doing some setups. Now, one thing that I noticed was that it was constantly yawing when I was trying to do a little bit of a hover there, just line of sight. And so that sort of implied that the center point of the yaw channel was out. And with the uh, clean flight software and base flight, your center point should be set to 1500 for all your channels. Now, I've had to tweak, add some sub trim to a number of them. And one thing I've picked up here, which is really not very good, I'm afraid. I'm trying to be positive about this thing, but this radio link transmitter is not really impressing me at the moment. Um, now, I, I set the sub trim to try and get the yaw down to zero but I've got it like 1502 with enough dead band but if I move full to the left and release that's all right if I go full to the right and arm it and release that's okay if I go back again for 1511 um, that's way outside the dead band so hmm that's a little bit odd so let's go into that's fine there I'm just going to raise the throttle a bit so we're not going to be disarming let's see what happens well, 1513, that's going to be yawing all the time. You can hear the motors are going. That is going to be constantly yawing. It just doesn't center. The left-hand stick just doesn't center properly. That, that yaw is terrible. Um, we'll disarm. Goes back that time, but let's try it again. It's okay. Sometimes it doesn't center. There we go. Look, 1511. Um, hmm, it's like, that's really bad. That's If I'm flying and I'm going along, it's going to be constantly yawing to the left now all the time. I wonder if the other controls are similarly... That seems all right. No, the pitch control is okay. Let's try the roll control, see if that has the same effect. No, you I'll just move that to the center position. Roll seems to be fine. Yep. I mean, you can't get it 1500 exactly. It tends to fluctuate a little bit, but that's going to a maximum of 1503. But that left-hand channel, that's 13, that's 11, that's way up. This radio is a dud. Um, it just doesn't center on the yaw, so it's going to be really hard to fly something really fast when it's going to be constantly yawing on me because it just doesn't maintain a center position. As I say, a bit disappointing. I've been trying to be really positive about this thing because I really want to have some fun with it, but I'll have to, I might have to take the back off and see if I can, maybe the pot's loose, maybe it just needs more spring tension, I don't know. But Okay, delving a bit deeper into this issue, the pot value is changing, and because uh, I've taken the back off, I've tightened up the springs, makes no difference, and I think I've tracked the problem down. Look at this little plate here. This is supposed to be holding the pot in place and it's loose as hell if we look down there hopefully it'll focus you can see that this is really not doing at all a good job of holding that in place if I go around the other side and look at the other stick unit there's another plate there for that one let me just move this and you can see if I go in here with my probe this one is actually tight as a duck's bum it's not moving at all so I'm thinking that the loose plate over here as you can see it's on, a, it's on the piss. I mean, this loose plate, if I just move the stick a bit, try and get a bit of angle on there for you. 
that uh, that loose plate there, maybe allowing the pot to, to move slightly. See, look at it, it's loose as anything. Yeah? It's maybe allowing the pot to move slightly, which is why it's not going back to centre. Uh, hell of a lot of work for a brand new radio, I've got to say. Um, I will take that out, give it a bit of a tweak, a bit of a bend so it holds the pot more firmly in place, and hopefully, hopefully that'll fix it. Let's have a look. Okay, I gave that plate a bit of a tweak, so now it's actually nice and firm. It's still a little bit of wiggle, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. And we'll, uh, see, uh, probably a focus, focus, you sorry camera. Anyway, yeah, so it's actually a lot tighter than it was. And we'll just plug things in, see if we get um, far better centering. I'm hoping we will, um, but it may not be the whole answer. Now, what I've done here is to save putting the whole thing back together and plug it in clean flight. I'm just going to put the meter across the pot and we should be able to measure the any difference and the centering from either end, let's go, whoops, it's a bit of a fiddly job because these micro connectors are a pain in the ass to get your probes on, so excuse me while I curse and swear a little bit, it's all part of the course, hopefully, there you go, 3.35 or 3.36, I'm going to move the stick to one side and back, and 3.75, let's move it to the other side and back, 3.40, no, this, the, I'm afraid the stick unit is buggered, it is the stick unit is just not working properly. It's it's faulty. Um, it may be that the spline or the little sh where the shaft goes into the plastic arm, there's too much slop in that. But obviously there's slop in there somewhere. Um, I'm going to try actually just moving the pot itself. Um, let's try giving the pot a little move without moving the stick. See if it, the pot itself may be moving. This is actually not easy to do. Pushing one way, pushing the other way, pushing one way, pushing the other way. There's a little bit of movement there from the pot, but I think it's internal to the pot or internal to the stick unit. So we're not going to get a fix on this today. Right, using the camera as a diagnostic tool here, I've got the macro lens on, I'm getting up really close. And you can see that little brass piece in the middle, that's the shaft of the pot. And the, you can see the arm, I don't see any slop in here. At least I can't see it when I'm looking through the camera. It seems to follow the movement of the plastic very closely. So... No, I don't think I can see any slop. Just get a manual focus because that's a little bit um, hard to. F Where are we? Let's get it in and focus it. There we go. Right now we can actually see the brass a little bit better. It doesn't seem to um, have any slop, which really only means that it's the pot itself which has got internal something's going on there. The where the wiper joins onto that shaft, there may be a bit of slop in that. That's, I mean, these aren't exactly expensive pots, so there's going to be a failure percentage. And I think, as always, if there's a dud, I get it. Bugger. Hmm. And, of course, the solution is I could just increase the dead bands on the flight controller, but that's going to make it harder to fly too, because then it doesn't respond to small movements of the stick as well, and you tend to start overcorrecting. So there you go, the Screamer 250 is now ready to fly, but um, the weather has crapped out again. I was hoping to get it in. I, I came out really early so I could get up and going before the wind and the rain arrive, but I'm too late, it's the weather's turned to crap again, so no flying today, unfortunately, never mind, uh, that's just another example of, you know, you think you've got a quick, simple review because it's ready to fly and you just get out there and whoop, not three hours down the drain, it's trying to fix stuff that, you know, mm, fair enough, to be fair to Foxtech and Fu from Foxtech, this was sho shoved out to me really, really quickly. They didn't check everything. Obviously, I didn't have time. They wanted to get it to me. So I'm not going to condemn them too much, providing the product they ship is up to scratch. And rely on you people to tell us that because get some feedback here. If you have problems, if you buy this product and you have problems with it, let us know so we can tell other people. If you have a good experience, let us know that too so that others will find out. Now I'm going to have to wait until the weather improves, which isn't supposed to be until Thursday, I think maybe a brief window on Thursday. <laughs> oh man, this winter is crap. So as soon as it happens, I will be flying. In the meantime, I've got some other mini quad reviews to do as well. So there's stuff going on the bench. There'll be a couple more videos. Some, where are we? Oh, let me reach out on the shot. We've got this coming up as well. Woo! And it's little brother, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully that'll be a, an, an easier experience. I'm sure it will. Anyway, thank you for watching. In the meantime, time for me to get back to the bench and uh, get on with some other stuff. Bye for now.